Welcome to the new world of Turok. Imagine, if you will, a world like any other that had grown quite large. A empire that was able to strive across every part of the known world. But then one day, the worshipped gods of this world disappeared. All of them without a single sound. Those who once knew these gods now forget their faces, their names, their everything. And as they look around at what was once known as the gods' home, the statues, the writings, they would note that all of the identifying features were scratched away by an unknown power. The gods were dead. The cataclysm occurred, and the primordial forces that used to be dormant now rise up. The demon lords have now taken over most of the continents, and not only that, but the only ones to try to stop them had failed. Six thousand years later, give or take, the world is now broken. What was once dreamt to be a newfound empire of great proportion destroyed in the field of broken dreams. Draw. Yeah, so that is my D&D world. At the very least, that's the one I'm currently running. It's the one that was after Thoria because of the fact that my computer blew up with all the information inside of it, making it so that there's nothing left of that world. I mean, I have it in my head, but that's basically it. Uh, it was a little disappointing to a lot of my players, so instead I decided to make a new world. And for the fun of it, I basically used the setting of the old one as the base of this one. Um, that old world was destroyed by some unknown creatures of mass chaotic uh, energy. Actually, I guess a lot of them are known. Uh, I like D&D's God system. I, I like the ideas of what they had for gods and demons and such like that. So I, I reused a lot of that. And by reusing it, I mean I had those demons kind of buffed up in this version. But in the prior version, I was just kind of using the lore. It was actually kind of interesting to read into the D&D lore, and there was different variations to how it all works, but one of them that really was interesting to me was how Io, the overlord, I mean the over god of uh, the gods basically, had this capability of just at any time taking away the godly powers and just sending them to the mortal plane on a whim if he felt like it. Now, the actual reasons for why he did so were explained in better detail and had a lot more meaning behind it, but I was always wondering to myself if such a capability was, you know, possible. It, it was very possible for Io to just strip the gods completely and just kill them off if he wanted to. But how would people react to that? What would happen? In D&D, in &D, a lot of the time, uh, the gods act kind of as a force against demons, because demons who are in from the abyss send out those creatures all the time. Uh, specifically, Hell, funny enough, has a lot to do with defending against it in the Blood Wars, but that's push aside for now. Uh, if the demons had the capability of just going all out, conquering everything, that is what Trog's about. Uh, the Cataclysm, which happened 6,000 years before any of the campaigns begin, uh, erupted out and started to conquer the entire world. Um, and now, 6,000 years later, the terrain has changed drastically, the continents have been pushed together, and, well, if you're surviving, you're not surviving well. There are a few areas, societies, that fight against the demons and try their best to actually take back what is, well, the world known as the mortal plane, but it is difficult. Of course it is. If you have demons who have capabilities like Graz or Jublex or... Uh, even if we just try to throw in some new ones uh, that are trying to raise up for power, those creatures can destroy most people. That's why we had heroes. That's why D&D existed. You were the hero parties who had to deal with that and try to take it back. It is very difficult to do, especially because if you try to kill a demon lord, uh, Demogorgon, for example, uh, let's say Demogorgon rose up and you had to fight off him. Well, you kill him. What happens next? Well, he doesn't die. He gets sent back to his um, home plane, the Abyss. If you kill him there, then he dies. But, well, you didn't. And he can come back. If, you know, he regenerates and such. But are you going to go to the Abyss while other demons are also attacking your place? And you don't necessarily know that they are dead, but not dead? No, you probably would have to defend your home from other people. So it's a constant battle that only means to get worse. 
because as you defeat them and you suddenly see more of them come back and maybe even the same demon lord that took you so many troops to defend with come back from life your your hopes get shattered uh people will die there are societies that survive and they usually have to use some form of technique to do so be it barrier magic from magics like the magic city that i have be it from uh just having good connections and organization skills be it from just staying stealthy and being a nomadic society that moves throughout the world rather than staying in one place or be it just having the best heroes and guilds come together to defend this place so hard that the demons don't think it's worth it to just take the desert and just leave it there as they conquer the rest of the world uh all of these are possibilities all of these are societies and in the campaign, there are a group of them called the Hub Societies that kind of work together to go against all the demons. Um, it's not the best, uh, especially because demon worshippers are still a thing. People who, you know, side with the demons, because if you're going to get killed, maybe if you side with them, they won't kill you as hard. Or maybe they will give you power and boom, you won't die. So there's a lot of interplay that happens there, and I, I like when players have ideas, uh, so I usually listen to them as well. Let's say that player wants to play as a hero of sorts, but he, in reality he's actually working for the demons, and he's just putting up a front every time he goes to kill a demon uh, in secret. Whenever he gets the hit, is the character, uh, the demon, just pretends to go down, uh, goes limp or something like that. That stuff they could talk to me about, and I can actually make it happen, and then... There's some inter-party play that happens later down the line. But yeah, Tarog has been running for almost a year now, maybe two. And it is something that I am very passionate about because I'm seeing how it progresses. Currently, we have a few of them that open. Like we have uh, Archangels. Uh, we have other things too that I'm working on uh, with my players and I'm having fun with it. But this was a living world and it is still breathing and it has currently three running campaigns that are happening all at once so i have stories to tell if need be uh this is just one of the other ones that i'm working on uh Hecagrim, which is my main rp that i did before this and it's currently on higher uh hiatus uh has so many stories and it should have came up by now what's your think it's uh it's the story of one of uh the characters that i can't get too much into yet because it's revealed in part two exactly who it is but yeah uh, I'm hoping that gets a few likes and such, and if it does, then it might be more worth it to go into it, get voice acting done for it and such. Right now, it's just me and my fiance, and I don't want to make her work too much, especially because she's a little shy with that stuff. Uh, so I would appreciate if that gets, like, I don't know, I'm not popular, like 100 likes. I'll probably go and continue that. I, I will probably do it regardless, but that will encourage me to do it faster. Otherwise, you get videos like this where I'm just sitting in front of a camera talking about my world, which I'm sure some of you like, right? Yeah. Anyway, Turog is another world that I am going to be discussing on this channel, telling stories of. Maybe I'll go into one of the campaigns that did complete, which is the delivery, and that built up the premise of some parts of this world that are darker uh, sought. Maybe I'll talk about other things too. And who knows? I know I have a lot of players... Uh, who do watch this as well. They're just trying to support me and such. And I'm planning to have some of them talk to me about how I DM, how I uh, RP with them, and all that stuff. So we'll see how things go in the future. And I, hopefully this goes better. I'm new to... I'm well, not new. But I'm new enough to trying to discuss this stuff on YouTube nowadays. Uh, I did when I was younger and had a lot more dreams. But... Uh, like Turog, those were broken real fast when I was growing up. So hopefully I can rebuild, um, see if people will enjoy what I'm doing. And if they do, I'll just keep doing it. And if they don't, then I'll do it for my friends. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Look forward to any Turog content that's coming out. Uh, have a great one.